Welcome to our presentation on the SAW Reproductive Tract. This presentation shall provide students with a step-by-step -step procedure of identifying the parts and functions of the SAW Reproductive Tract. This presentation was adapted with permission and some modifications from the lecture of Dr. John J. Parrish, a professor of reproductive physiology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. At the end of the session, Students must be able to identify the anatomical parts of the sow reproductive tract, connect structure with function for the different parts of the female reproductive tract, and identify a follicle and a corpus luteum in the ovary of a sow. So this is a dorsal view of the sow reproductive tract showing its general parts. The sow reproductive tract has the following uh, structures. So we'll start with the ovary. The ovary is followed by the oviduct. You also have the long uh, uterine horns of the sow. And uh, beyond that, we have the uterine body. After the uterine body is the cervix. And after the cervix is the vagina and the vulva. Uh, associated structures are the bifurcation, so that uh, separates the, the left and the right uterine horns. And we also have the urinary bladder. The suspensory tissue, which supports the ovaries, the oviduct, uterus, cervix, and the anterior vagina is the broad ligament. It supplies the vascular system, lymphatic drainage, and nerves to the tract. The portion which attaches to and supports the ovary is known as the mesovarium. The oviduct is surrounded and supported by the mesosalpinx. The uterus is supported by the mesometrium. When we are going to cut into the vagina and the cervix with a scalpel or scissors along the line, shown in this left figure, we'll be able to see the structures on the right. So this portion here represents the cervix and uh, this part here represents the vagina. This is a closer look of the cut portion of the vagina on the left and the cervix on the right. In the left image is an enlarged uh, picture of the vaginal portion of the reproductive tract. Note that the vagina can be separated into two parts. We have the anterior vagina that is nearer to the cervix, and we have also the posterior vagina, which is also known as the caudal vagina or the vestibule. The separation is delineated by uh, the change in color and texture. In the right, we have the enlarged image of the cervix. The cervix of the pig is composed of the following we have the external cervical os in this part here. We also have the internal cervical os, the one that uh, separates or that is an opening between the cervix and the uterine body. And we also have the uh, prominent feature of the cervix of the sow is the presence of the interdigitating prominences. And we also have the anterior boundary of the cervix is the uterine body and the posterior boundary is the anterior vagina. So in some species, the cervix extends into the anterior vagina to form a pocket which is known as the fornix. The pig, however, does not have a fornix. Cutting until the uterine horn will reveal these structures. The uterus is composed of uterine body and the uterine horns are shown in this image. The implantation, anatomy, and physiology is not the same as in the cow. In the cow, bumps on the uterine lining called caruncles are the site of placental attachment to the mother. However, these structures are not present in the pig as the placenta simply lies alongside the uterine wall. So the other structures that can be found here is the internal cervical os, which is the transition between the uterine body and the cervix. The uterus is composed of three layers, the outer 
or the serosa is called the perimetrium. The muscle or the muscular layer is called the myometrium. And the inner mucosa plus the submucosa comprise the endometrium. Next, we have the oviducts. The oviducts lie beyond the uterine horns and adjacent to the ovary. So in this structure, we have here the ovary and we have here the uterine horn. So this portion here, now from here up to here, up to this point here is the oviduct. The surface of the infundibulum is covered with the fembria, but they cannot be resolved at this level of magnification. So this portion here represents the infundibulum, and we also have here the ostium of the oviduct. The infundibulum with the fembria will function to capture the oocyte at ovulation and transport it into the ostium. So the ostium is the opening into the oviduct. The junction with the uterus in the oviduct is known as the uterotubal junction. And the oviduct is supported by the mesosalpings, shown in this uh, figure. So this uh, oviduct here is the right oviduct of the sow reproductive tract. This is the left oviduct of our specimen the sow reproductive tract and note that uh, you can again see the same structures so we have here the presence of of course the the isthmus part of the oviduct this is the ampulla part of the oviduct this portion here and uh, this oviduct however was laid out so that you can see the uh, how now the ampulla enters the infundibulum from the opposite side so of course this is part here is the infundibulum then uh, this part here is the uh, ampulla, you know, the ampulla of the oviduct. So we have here the ovary of the sow. So we have here in the left, on the right, and on the right are the ovary of the sow. And uh, this is, uh, we have here, you know, the structures that can be found here are the corpora lutea. And we also have here the tertiary follicles and the corpora albicantia or the corpus albicans. On the right, we have here the corpora albicantia, the tertiary follicles, and the corpora uh, corpus lutium, or the CN. The function of the follicles is uh, to produce oocytes and estrogen. The function of the corpus lutium is to produce pro pro progestins. Uh, when we are going to compare this in the ovary of, this, of the cow, the ovary of a cow is considered to have an almond shape, while the ovary of the pig is different with that of the cow because it is mulberry shaped you know, or it resembles a cluster of grape or a grape cluster like appearance. Another difference is that in terms of the follicles and the corpora lutea, the orientation of these two. Um, in the pig, now the, we have here the follicles. And we have here the CL. So in the pig, the these structures sit very much on the surface of the ovary, while that of the cow, most of the structures are buried within the ovary. So this means that these structures here, you know, the follicles, the CL, are prominent in the pig ovary. They are more uh, conspicuous in the pig ovary. Uh, unlike that of the cow's ovary were in these structures are mostly buried within the ovary so in the diagram we also have some small white spots or yellow spots on the surface of the ovaries that is not a tertiary follicle and these are, are likely to be corpora albicantia so this portion here uh, the one with a yellow yellow color represents the corpora albicantia or the corpus albicans. Uh, this is also known as the white body, but uh, it is color yellow in pink. And um, this uh, corpora albicantia are, of course, uh, demonstrates you know, the regressing corpora lutea. So this can be verified by cutting into one of the structure with a scalpel to demonstrate that this is not no, a corpus luteum. So of course, this corpus luteum is uh, also known as a yellow body. So you can uh, probably uh, misinter, 
be mistaken you know, for it to be corpora albicantia. But this is again you know, the corpus albicans or the corpora albicantia of the pig with the yellow color and this is the corpus titium.